Vladimir Putin, I believe to be the richest man in the world. I believe he's worth $200 billion. That money is held all over the world in banks in America and all over. In order to get that $200 billion, he's had to instruct a lot of people working for him, let's say 10,000 people working for him, to do terrible things, to arrest, kidnap, torture, and kill, to, to take people's properties away. As a result of the Magnitsky Act, he can no longer guarantee absolute impunity because um, all of a sudden we've created consequences in the West. American-born businessman Bill Browder is a Putin adversary who has emerged as a small but key player in the Russia investigation. Browder was once the largest foreign investor in Russia until, he says, he and his attorney, Sergei Magnitsky, tried to expose massive corruption among people linked to the Kremlin. The backlash was fierce. Browder says that members of Putin's inner circle stole $230 million from his company and set him up for tax evasion charges. Sergei Magnitsky was jailed and later died in custody. Browder was a driving force behind the 2012 Magnitsky Act in his name, which for the first time imposed sanctions on individual Russians and which was ostensibly the topic of discussion at one now famous meeting in Trump Tower. And joining me now is Bill Browder, founder and CEO of Hermitage Capital Management. Um, Bill, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So your testimony got uh, overshadowed because, of course, that was Scaramucci Day uh, in the media. And so a lot of people didn't see it. Uh, give us sort of an encapsulated version of why you went to, uh, to Washington to testify and what it is that you think people need to know about the Putin regime and the Magnitsky Act. Well, the, the whole basis for, for showing up in Washington was that my lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, had been murdered by the Russian government in 2009. And um, I, I embarked on this big project to get justice for him, which led to the passage of the Magnitsky Act, which freezes the assets and bans the visas of people who are involved in his murder and who do similar types of things in Russia. And Vladimir Putin became absolutely enraged by this whole thing. Um, the reason he was enraged was because some of his money is um, potentially coming from the same crime that Sergei Magnitsky exposed, and all that money in the West can be frozen. And so he retaliated by banning the adoption of, of um, Russian children by American families. Uh, and, and then he carried on with his retaliation. Um, by, by doing various things, including a big lobbying campaign in Washington to try to get the Magnitsky Act repealed. And so I was invited to the Senate Judiciary Committee, and I was invited there to talk about all these Westerners, we American lobbyists who were working effectively on behalf of Vladimir Putin, not, ad not admitting that they were, and trying to get this impor important piece of human rights legislation repealed. And, um, and, and the committee, the Judiciary Committee, was, was absolutely shocked by my testimony because uh, people just didn't expect that the evil of Putin could be so, so, so clearly infiltrating Washington. And, and so when you hear that Donald Trump Jr. met with a lawyer who, among other things, has lobbied for the overturning of the Magnitsky Act and that they talked about adoptions, what do you hear when you hear that set of facts? Well, the first thing I hear is that, um, uh, or first thing, I, my reaction is that nobody, there wasn't a single person in that room talking about adoptions. They were talking about this repealing sanctions against Putin and his cronies. And, and it doesn't surprise me that these people showed up in Trump Tower because they were, Putin has been trying every different tactic he can to try to, to try to ease these sanctions because these sanctions affect him more personally than anything else out there because his own money is at stake. So you're, what you're saying and what you testified to then effectively is that Vladimir Putin himself could be subject to Magnitsky sanctions? That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that Vladimir Putin is one of the richest men, if not the richest men in the world. He has a lot of money held in, in Western banks and American banks, and that he received through one of his proxies money from the crime that Sergei Magnitsky exposed. And under the words of the Magnitsky Act, um, the person who receives money from that crime can have their money frozen in America. So he potentially could have his money frozen by the Magnitsky Act, and he's got a lot of money to be frozen. And now I want to get your reaction to uh, the U.S. president, to Donald Trump, on Thursday uh, in New Jersey, and he was asked about the new suite of sanctions uh, that he sort of reluctantly signed in response to Russia's interference in the 2016 election. Take a listen. Mr. President. Do you have any response to the Russian president uh, expelling 755 workers from our entity? 
No, I, I want to thank him because we're trying to cut down on payroll. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm very thankful that he let go of a large number of people because now we have a smaller payroll. There's no real reason for them to go back. So he, I greatly appreciate the fact that they've been able to cut our payroll for the United States. Save, we'll save a lot of money. As somebody who has tangled with the Putin regime and whose lawyer um, was killed uh, or, or died in, in, in custody in Russia, what, what did you make of that response by the U.S. president? Well, um, basically, um, Vladimir Putin um, doesn't respond to anything other than tough force. And, um, and for, for, any, any me for any kind of message to Vladimir Putin that um, he can do what he wants and, and get away with it is not a good message to be sending. And so um, I, I, I would have preferred um, Trump to have, have a much stronger and more aggressive uh, reaction to what, what Putin has done. But, um, you know, perhaps he's got some other strategy in mind that we'll see play out in the future. I, I do understand that he's talking about uh, our response to that on September 1st. So, so um, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on this, but, but Putin is a guy who only st understands a boot on the throat, and if that's the ultimate um, response to this particular action, it's not a good one in my mind. Yeah. You also testified uh, when you went before the Judiciary Committee that Fusion GPS, which is a, a company that was building up a file on Donald Trump, an opposition research file, um, is also um, uh, was hired as a client of Natalia Vel Vel Veselnitskaya, who is the lawyer who met with Donald Jr. Uh, at Trump Tower and who's been lobbying for the repeal of the Magnitsky Act. Are you contending that Russia was attempting to uh, to hurt Donald Trump in the election? Well, so there's two different issues. There, there was the Fusion GPS did a Donald Trump dossier, and Fusion GPS did an anti Magnitsky dossier. The only thing that I can um, uh, uh, testify to, and that I did testify to, is that uh, at the same time as Fusion GPS was working uh, effectively um, for the Russians um, against Magnitsky, they were working against the Russians um, with their Trump dossier. I, I don't know um, how, how, how those two things get mixed up, but what I can say for sure. Is that, at, that that Fusion GPS was receiving money indirectly from the Russians at the same time as they were preparing the dossier? All right. Well, uh, Bill Browder, we really appreciate you being here. Um, thank you so much for shining light uh, on this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And coming up, Omarosa, the Honorable Omarosa, starts a firestorm in New Orleans. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.